Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sebastian Gwesgen. I'm the co-founder of TriggerMesh, and thanks for coming to my uh, virtual KubeCon North America 2020 uh, talk. The title is Serverless or Serviceful, and uh, here I am recording, and uh, I hope uh, you're going to have uh, a good time listening to this, uh, to this talk. So let's go and let's, have, uh, let's get the party started. Um, we've come a long way. We've come a, a long way since uh, Kubernetes was uh, started, you know, June, July 2014. It's been six years, a little bit, little bit of it, six years. So it's been, it's been, a, it's been a while and, uh, and yes, we've come, we've come a long way. So Kubernetes was created and was donated to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF, right? At the beginning, there was only one, it was great. And, uh, and now, you know, the ecosystem has exploded. Uh, there are lots of, uh, lots of things, lots of software, lots of companies that are part of CNCF. And I'm not showing the, the landscape to, to criticize it. Uh, I'm actually extremely happy to see this because in six years, uh, an entire community has been, has been created. Additional software have been created. And it's been really, really, uh, you know, uh, really interesting and enjoyable. And over those six years, you know, uh, I think there's been three main narratives that have fueled this, uh, this development of this ecosystem. Uh, one big narrative has been containers versus VMs, right? We were busy doing VM orchestration. We were busy doing OpenStack, cloud stack deployment. And there's been this switch from OpenStack to Kubernetes. Uh, we started dealing with containers as application package. And definitely that's been a huge narrative. The other narrative has been, uh, you know, saying, hey, you know, we, we shouldn't focus on undi undifferentiating code, right? So we should only work on code that brings value to the business and we should delegate boring things, you know, boring quotes, right? Uh, but if it's not bringing direct value, doesn't have direct almost IP, intellectual property, we shouldn't, you know, really focus on it. And the third narrative has been, hey, you know what, if we don't focus on undifferentiated code, we shouldn't focus on undifferentiated infrastructure as well, right? So you know what? I'm not here to manage a Kubernetes cluster. I'm not here to manage a Kafka cluster. Somebody else should do it for me, right? So we've had those three narratives that have helped uh, craft this, this new ecosystem, right? So what has happened, you know, because of those narratives, now we live in this multi-cloud environment. Uh, and I'm not saying multi-cloud for marketing reasons and so on. It's just, yeah, it's just multi. It's very heterogeneous. So we have on-premises stuff. We've gone away from OpenStack, from basic VM uh, infrastructure. And now we have container orchestrators based on Kubernetes. We have OpenShift. We have VMware Tanzu. We have Rancher. All of that on-premises, uh, even though they can talk to the cloud. But anyway. So we have that on-premises. If we don't want to do this on-premises stuff, then we use a generic cloud like AWS, Google, you know, Azure, a more regional cloud like my buddies in Switzerland, Exascale, right? Uh, and we can manage our Kubernetes clusters on those generic clouds. Uh, but we also have very specialized, dedicated clouds. You, wanna, you want somebody to manage your Elasticsearch cluster, you go to Elastic. You want somebody to manage your Kafka cluster, go to Confluent. You want to store your metrics somewhere, Datadog, Salesforce, customers, right? So we have very dedicated clouds, SaaS offerings that have emerged. And all of this makes it a very multi-cloud environment, right? And there are very good reasons for this. Uh, again, back to the undifferentiating uh, quotes, uh, you know, bits, right? Uh, we want to run, you know, critical pieces on-premises. We want to keep that close to ourselves. But the undifferentiating uh, components, we want to delegate that, right? So we run on-premises stuff, uh, you know, that are critical. If we want, we delegate infrastructure management to the cloud. We use a managed service, uh, and then we have those dedicated offerings because you know what? Who who best to manage my Kafka cluster than Confluent, right? Well, you know, nobody. So might as well might as well use them, right? So there are very good reasons for this multi-cloud environment. It's not you know, it's not marketing, it's not, it's not nothing, right? Uh, 
So multi-cloud, you know, almost naturally it happened with those narratives, you know, pushing us. And, and now we, you know, I, I like to do a flashback to what's a cloud. What's a cloud, you know, if we go back to 2005, 2006 definition from NIST, uh, you know, and they say, well, three, five, but let's, let's, you know, just focus on three characteristics. It's on demand, measured service. So you know exactly there is metering, you know exactly how much you're using. And then elasticity, right? You need more, you get more. You need less, you get less, right? So those were the three, I mean, three of the five, the other ones, you know, network access, which is almost a given resource pooling, you know, kind of multi-tenancy stuff. Um, but on-demand, metering, elasticity, three big characteristics of the, of the cloud, right? Uh, you know, that's what we had at, at the beginning. And even then, people, you know, were, of course, arguing about the cloud and, you know, well, there is no cloud, it's just somebody else's computer. Well, yeah, you're right. It's somebody else managing those, those servers, first time I'm going to say servers, uh, doing a better job at it than, than you are, right? But it gives you on-demand capability, elasticity, and metering, right? So that was the, the cloud. And now when we look at serverless, you know, I like to draw this, this parallel, right? So let's, let's remember the definition of cloud. And now let's look at serverless. Everybody is going to argue that the poster child of, of serverless these days is AWS Lambda. And when you look at the features of AWS Lambda, you find build custom backend services. Well, you know, that's where you, you build your API server. Bring your own code, right? Bring your, bring your own workload. Full turrets, you know, built in from the cloud. Completely automated infrastructure, right? You know, fully automated infrastructure. You don't see where it's running and it's managed for you. So managed service, basically. Automatic scaling, right? So you, you need more, you get more. You need less, you know, it runs on less. And then only pay for what you use. That's metering, right? So what do you see here? Well, you see on demand, you see metering and you see, uh, what's the last one? Elasticity, right? So the features of Lambda looks a lot like, you know, the core definition of cloud computing from, you know, more than 10 years ago, right? I, I find that fascinating. And now when you try to, you know, give a definition to serverless, well, the internet is, you know, coming back to help you. Same way that they were saying, well, there is no cloud. It's just somebody else is, you know, running your computer. Well, there is no serverless. Well, of course, they're servers, but it's just somebody else's, you know, fully managed infrastructure. And, and you pay for what you use. So it's a cloud, right? So anyway, and that's what, that's what we're seeing, right? So we have this you know, new multi-cloud environment, right? And when you look at the characteristics of this multi-cloud environment, it's from the beginning on demand, elastic, you know, and, and then metering. And it turns out that suddenly everything is looking more and more serverless. The cloud providers are saying, well, it's serverless. Yeah, it's serverless for you if you're using it but it's not serverless for them so i love this picture from a, a medium post from pablo lorio you know giving reference where where it's due uh, and if you look you know lambda is you know ser serverless for compute but then there is api gateway which is a serverless component s3 suddenly is becoming serverless storage uh, Amazon Dynamo, you know, DynamoDB, or, or even there is Aurora Serverless, it's becoming serverless. Cognito is used in serverless applications, right? So when you look at all the cloud offerings of the main generic clouds, you realize that more and more they are branding those offerings as serverless, right? So traditional cloud is also becoming serverless, okay? Um, and of course, it's as, as it should be. That's the real definition of cloud. On demand, elastic, and metering, you pay for what you use. So, of course, you know, the clouds are serverless for you, right? They're doing the job for you. The undifferentiated, you know, management of the infrastructure that you don't want to do, they're doing it for you, right? Hope, hope that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. So, let's, let's keep going and, and try to have, you know, fun with it. So, now then a question comes up. What happens when you don't manage the infrastructure? You delegate the specialized focus, uh, you delegate to specialized cloud. Sorry, I'm trying to read the slides, but 
you delegate to specialized clouds and you focus on differentiating business logic, right? So you delegate to, uh, to specialized clouds like Datadog to store your metrics. You don't want to manage the infra, so you're using GKE, right? And you concentrate just on your business logic. What happens, right? Well, you go service full, which is really a better term than serverless, right? You go service full. You have services everywhere, right? Because you just traded managing servers with managing services. And here I like to quote Patrick Debois, who was one of the you know, creators of the, the DevOps uh, movement. And he said, you know, as far back as you know, February 2017 in Ghent, Belgium, config management camp, he said, well, you don't manage servers, you just use services. So we shouldn't say serverless, but we're going service full, right? And that's really good. And that's really what we are trying to do from the beginning as people developing and deploying application, you know, developing the apps and operating the apps. That's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to be service full, right? So my, my co-founder, Mark Inkle, published this post recently on DevOps to DevApps. You can, you can find it in the, in the news tag. And really, you know, and I'm also mentioning it because Patrick has, has created DevOps, but, you know, 10 years ago almost, you know, we were all facing the, the traditional old world of monolithic application and siloed organization, the dev, the ops. And then we try to create best practices, better, you know, engineering practices. And that's where the DevOps movement emerged. The main foundation of all of this was trying to go faster, right? And as you try to go faster, you want to delegate. You want the undifferentiated bits, what doesn't really bring value to the business. You want somebody else to do it, somebody whose business it is to do it and so that you can concentrate on the stuff that your business really does and offers, right? So ultimately, you know, what we're saying at Trigger Mesh is that you move to dev apps, right? You're building the app, you're deploying the apps, but you don't really care you know, about the infrastructure, right? So, you know, you're more of a DevOps uh, person and it's DevOps uh, practice that's uh, really serviceful, okay? So your multi-cloud environment could be as everything on a single generic cloud, could be multiple generic clouds, you know, could be that uh, you have on-premises stuff that are very critical, you know, for uh, security auditing reasons. And then you, maybe you still use a dedicated cloud like Datadog to store your, store your metrics, right? There are different, you know, things that could happen here in your environment as you go service full and you delegate. Hope that makes sense. So what's the challenge? The challenge is that now you need to bridge all those things. Right? You need to bridge from on-prem to dedicated cloud. You need to bring, you need to bridge from dedicated to, you know, uh, you know, EKS. You need to bridge Salesforce from MKS, right? M manage Kafka on, uh, on AWS, right? That's the big challenge. You need to bridge those services. So, you know, this is not a, you know, a pitch uh, talk, but definitely that's what we do at, at Trigger Mesh. That's our vision. You know, that's why I'm here talking to you about this. Uh, we're building bridges, right? We're building bridges to link event sources to event targets or event syncs. And in the middle, we have uh, those brokers, right? So that's what we do uh, at Trigger Mesh. We build bridges between services that can exist on-prem in dedicated cloud or generic cloud. So how do we do this? Well, you need some glue, right? A lot of what we do is gluing stuff together, right? So you need a bunch of glue. You need some bricks, right? You need services that need to be stitched together. Uh, and doing it, you need to avoid making spaghetti, you know? At a chat, maybe a year and a half ago with Joe Bida, one of the founders of Trigger Mesh, of, uh, <laughs> no, of Kubernetes, sorry. And he said, yeah, that's great, Sebastian, but you need to make sure you're not making spaghetti. Yeah, that's right. You want to avoid making spaghetti, you know, even though spaghetti is very good, right? So how do you, how do, you do this? How do you build those bridges? Uh, well, you know, you're going to use a lot of events, right? All these systems, 
that are disconnected and sometimes, you know, man, I mean, often managed by different people. They have different organizational boundaries. They all emit events, right? So the events is really, you know, the glue or the substrate between all those services, right? And CNCF helps you with the cloud event specification, right? So you have those events flowing. And then everything needs an API. It's as old as the cloud or even, you know, before that. Uh, we need an API so that we can program, application programming interface. We need to program so that we can automate things. So we have events and then all those services, of course, they have an, an API, right? Uh, and then of course we need services, right? So you have services everywhere and they're elastic. You can use them on demand and you pay per use characteristic of a cloud service, right? So that's what you need to, you know, build those serviceful applications. So the API, right? What's the, the API? Well, Kubernetes to the rescue, CRD, custom resource definitions. If you need to extend the Kubernetes API, you define your CRDs, you have a declarative API, you write your reconciliation loops in your controllers, suddenly you can manage all of that with the GitOps mindset, the same GitOps mindset that you have for your other workload. Right? And then everything you do, you fall back on your feet with Kubernetes as a foundation. Right? So we are going serviceful. We can use the cloud, dedicated cloud, generic cloud, AWS, and so on. We can use on-prem. Suddenly, we have a common layer. We have this Kubernetes built uh, API. Right? CRD, yes, but then the proof is in the pudding. Look. Google has come up with Config Connector, which is Kubernetes API on top of all the GCP products. Amazon has the uh, ACK, AWS controllers for Kubernetes, and Azure as Azure Service Operator. So all the cloud providers are agreeing that uh, fronting all their services with a Kubernetes uh, uh, looking API is the right way to go. So suddenly, they expose an API. You're on-prem, you have CRDs. If you could have the same thing for dedicated clouds, you know, you're know you onto something, right? Uh, so that's what we do at Trigger Mesh. <laughs> so those bridges that I mentioned, those bridges to link all those services, you know, how, do you, how do you make them happen? Well, you, you build an API, of course. You build a declarative API that's going to say, hey, I need a bridge between this and that because that's what I'm trying to do, right? So we have an object called kind bridge, and then we have a bunch of objects like Salesforce source. We have Splunk target. We have transformation objects, right? So we have all of this represented as uh, CRDs. We have controllers, and with those, suddenly you can define those bridges. You can go service full, right? And you can, you know, get to the real uh, promise, not the premise, the promise of the cloud on demand, elastic, and uh, pay as you go. So I'm running out of time. I need to be, you know, mindful even though I'm recording. I could go on forever here, okay? But, you know, in our product, of course, we have an API. We have a nice looking front end. Here is just, you know, quick snapshot that I put in there. You can define those event sources that are flowing through the system from Google storage, from Azure, uh, you know, Event Hub, from AWS Cognito, you know, Oracle Cloud, if you want, Oracle Database, you know, you name it, right? All those different services are emitting events. They're saying, hey, I changed, right? They're emitting a notification that said, hey, something changed. Um, and then we take those events, we route them, we transform them, and you can go to a destination. And once you get to a destination, then suddenly you can go and perform a task, right? Where it gets very interesting in, in all this narrative that we're doing, in all this ecosystem that has boomed, is that even this, going serviceful, which my entire point is that, you know what, when you say serverless, you really mean serviceful and even driven, right? So as you go towards event-driven applications that are multi-cloud, you know, if you go like this and you embrace the, you know, the landscape, you fall back on your feet because everything can be managed as a Kubernetes API object. So that's beautiful. 
So here is just a snapshot of like a trigger mesh namespace. We have a bunch of controllers running for the different sources, the different destinations, you know, our, our transformation engine, our, you know, trigger flow controller, right? But if you're an operator, you're familiar with this, you can manage your event-driven applications that are bridging those services together. And you could also, the same way, manage GCP offering, manage your SQS queue, manage your DynamoDB, you know, tables and things like this, all the same way. That's the, that's the power. So in practice, use cases, of course, use cases. So what are we seeing out there? Well, we're seeing a lot of people that are wanting to go serviceful, right? They're wanting to go serviceful. Can be, can be a case of you know, governance with very strong auditing uh, requirements, right? Uh, you know, people wanting to say, hey, I need to keep track of what's coming out of my static code analysis, what's coming out of my Jenkins, what's coming out of my Bitbucket, right? I need to get all these events, you know, uh, and then I need to act on them. I need to, you know, do some processing of, of these events and then, you know, send them back to, a, uh, you know, a special, uh, you know, data lake or storage system and so on so that I can validate later on all my uh, my audits right so a strong use case we're seeing is devops governance especially in insurance you know big financial institution uh other use cases you know salesforce to back end you know back end back office right back office infrastructure you need to you need to sync between those two systems dedicated cloud you know run by salesforce where you have all your customers and so on and then you know keeping keeping your back office in sync and you want to be able to to link uh, link the two okay uh, and why do you want to use trigger mesh because you don't want to manage those undifferentiated code which are you know salesforce event source targeting kafka you don't want to maintain and uh, and uh, and uh, and um, and operate all of this right uh, and then the final one, which is, you know, just a, a new one that's coming up that, you know, that we have and I'm not putting much details here, but healthcare is also becoming, uh, you know, very interested in this. Lots of services involved in healthcare. So, you know, Google healthcare API to, you know, manage lots of uh, sensitive uh, patient data, potentially Google healthcare API, but you still want to use AWS. So you want to be able to send those Google healthcare API to any uh, AWS uh, service, right? So the bottom line, you know, the conclusion here is that we're talking about serverless and a lot of people are getting hung up, you know, where are the servers and so on, <laughs> so they're still servers. What you're really trying to do, you're trying to build event-driven applications that are serviceful. They compose a lot of services, on-premises services, dedicated cloud, Datadog, Salesforce, and then you know generic uh, cloud like AWS and, and Google. You're trying to link all those services. You're going serviceful, a much better term, thanks to Patrick. Uh, and how you do this? You need a spec for events. Thank you, CNCF uh, Serverless Working Group for the cloud event uh, spec. Um, and then you need APIs, and that's where you know Kubernetes uh, also comes to to the rescue, right? So that's it. Thank you so much again, Sebastian. Here you can find me on Twitter at sebgoa. Uh, ping me if you want to, you know, get a, a deeper dive into Trigger Mesh. Uh, I'll be on for the Q and A if I manage to upload this talk and uh, join the uh, the chat. Thanks for joining, and uh, see you online.